Hi everyone, Nothany Sound Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for a review of the new King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard album Fishing for Fishies. This is the latest full-length LP from Australian psych rock wizards King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, who are fresh off of a well-deserved break, at least I hope they took a break, after an ambitious effort in 2017 where they released not one, not two, but but five new albums of original material. Every record had its own style and sound and concept from the microtonal, microtonal banana, the progressive rock influenced Polygon to Wanna Land, also the collaborative, jazzy, trippy, and somewhat dreamy sketches of Brunswick East. I didn't love every project the band put out in this span of time, but still very much admired the effort they were putting forward. And I was certainly looking forward to hearing how the band would enter the next phase of their career. Now, going into this album, I really had no idea what to expect, even after having enjoyed a few cuts that teased toward the release of this record. I loved the heavy analog synthesizers all over Psy Boogie. The jaunty jazz rock and harp runs all over the track The Bird Song are pretty sweet. This is actually one of several moments on the album where harp turns up to create a transitional moment. There was the weird, playful, experimental folk of the title track, the incredibly groovy boogie Man Sam. I really couldn't see where this album was going, even though it was staring me right in the face. And being the vintage rock historians that King Gizzard are, of course, this album indulges in electric boogie woogie blues, with of course some very interesting experiments and variations in the mix. Yes, the sounds of Canned Heat and Little Feet and Molly Hatchet as well as ZZ Top are alive and well on this album. Those electric blues riffs and licks, the squawking harmonicas, the thumping drum beats, all of which serve as a rock solid bass line for King Gizzard to throw some very weird ideas on top of. The track This Thing features some very eerie and persistent jazz chords placed throughout some of the verses. Also toward the back end of the track, the band is suddenly thrusted into this driving Krautrockian jam where the harmonicas on the track are dueling with some sci-fi synth melodies. It's not one of my favorite tunes on the entire record, but I still find the mix of influences seamlessly coming together on this track to be really admirable. Unfortunately, I feel roughly the same way about the track The Bird Song. Again, like the variety of instrumentation here, like the weird influences converging on top of this boogie backdrop, but ultimately I find the tune pretty forgettable. Not so much though for the track Plastic Boogie, where I absolutely love the guitar licks, the wild group vocals laid all over the track, as well as the lyrics about the destructive nature of plastic waste on our environment. The tight and bright stuttering guitars on this track are exhilarating, as well as the chaotic rhythm section. And to take it back to the track Psy Boogie, as well as Acarine, these songs see King Gizzard fusing this boogie sound with these thick layers of progressive analog synths, pushing this sound into an epic but weird retro-futuristic direction. I also love the lyrics on the last cut too, depicting this depressed cyborg who's fishing for trout in a binary brook. Psy Boogie is also the longest track on this record at 6 minutes and 48 seconds. I love the numerous phases the band brings this song through and the way they're able to meld these synths and these robot vocals onto this old school rock groove and, and build. There are so many weird and unexpected takes and directions that the band takes this boogie sound in and it's just maybe the biggest selling point of this album. From the demented and distorted Reels Not Real, which features some totally unexpected show tune inspired verses that actually go over very, very well. Then there's the track The Cruel Millennial, which when it comes to blues rock is much more primped and refined and cleaned up. Sounds like something that Fleetwood Mac would have recorded back in the day. In a lot of ways, this track is actually a dead ringer for a Fleetwood Mac song, maybe with the exception of the lyrics, which are all about not really being able to identify with the technology addiction and love of battle royale games and tablet screens that uh, the millennial generation faces. It's a little pretentious, but there is definitely a vibe coming off of the lyrics here of, of why can't I relate? Uh, so the track is also struggling with these feelings of just being an outsider. But my least favorite cut on the entire album easily is the title track itself. Even though I do identify very directly with the sentiment of the song of just leaving fishies alone, letting them be, uh, not eating animals and letting them live naturally. Hey! 
You stop shoving your vegan prepper ganders down my throat. I can eat what I want to eat. Leave me alone. Yeah, but uh, still, I don't care for the tune or the instrumental all that much. This just feels like a very annoying piece of weirdo folk that you would get if you forced the Wiggles to uh, write an experimental psychedelic folk rock song. I find the nasally vocals on this thing to be completely annoying, the effects laid on top of them too. Also, I don't see how this track works all that well into the boogie context of the rest of the songs on here. Sure, there are some electric blues embellishments coming out of the guitars on this track, and the drum beat sounds like something that may be in the background of a ZZ Top song. But outside of setting the tone for many of the environmentalist and naturalistic themes that run throughout many tracks on this record, I don't really feel like this song does all that good a job of kind of setting the table for the rest of these tracks and the sound they bring. Overall, I think this is a very interesting record. I think lyrically there's a smart concept to it. I think instrumentally and musically there is a smart concept to it. Sure, the execution on a few tracks leaves a lot to be desired or, um, you know, just a few songs that I think are really underwhelming. Still, I think King Gizzard delivers some of their best material to date, and I love that the band is continuing to stay creative, stay on the cutting edge, and make something old sound new again, and essentially just doing things that their contemporaries in the rock genre wouldn't dare to do at this point. I'm feeling a decent two strong seven on this one, Tran. Zishin, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, King Gizzard, uh, forever.